Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Warwick Homestead. This video is all about shops and we're going to be running a number of experiments with this video. The goal of this video is to finally come down with a formula. How much money can one shop and one settler generate each day? Now I'm coming into this with a suspicion that it only takes one unassigned settler to start generating crop, I'm sorry, to just start generating caps, and that any additional unassigned settler does not grant your settlement more money, that it only takes one. I'm also, I also have the sneaking suspicion that more than one shop doesn't actually make you more money at all. And if that's the case, <laughs> I'm gonna be really bummed. But let's take a look here. All right, I have not been to the Warwick Homestead in a long time, so there's a lot here. Let's see. 900 bottle caps. Okay, so uh, looking good. I, at 50 caps a day, that's like 18 days, right? So I haven't been here for 18 in-game days. Now, in order to measure this, <coughs> pardon me, we're going to be using a mod. The mod is called the... Um, Settlement man Management Software Mod. And to use it, you have to hook up a terminal. So let's take a look here. Let's load our software. And let's look at some statistics. Okay, so my happiness is at 77. It's not that high. In fact, it's lower than usual. Um, and I only have 22 settlers. All right, let's take a look at what the assignments are. Total settlers, 36, zero unassigned. That really confuses me because for the longest time, I thought that it took unassigned settlers to generate caps at a settlement. But you just saw me loot 900 caps. So either I lost a settler along the way or somehow a settler reassigned itself or unassigned settlers don't really matter. Okay, so uh, that means that first things first, let's run the test and see how much money we make after 24 hours with all settlers assigned. And to do this, we're gonna do a bunch of fast traveling. So look at the time. It's August 1st, 2289 at 1.23 a.m. And the reason I chose the Warwick Homestead is because it is the farthest away from this side of the map that you can possibly go. So let's go to Vault 111 and see what time it is. All right, here we are at Vault 111 and it is still August 1st at 2.48 p.m. So to fast travel from one side of the map all the way over here to all the way over there takes 13 hours just over 13 hours and 30 minutes. So by the time I come back, if I fast travel back, it will have been over 24 hours, which means that there should still be something there. Let's find out. All right, here we are at the Warwick Homestead. We fast traveled to Vault 111 and we fast traveled back. It's been over 24 hours. Let's take a look. It's August 2nd at 4.22 a.m. It is, um, it's been, it's been well over 24 hours. So let's take a look. What have we got? No caps. Okay, no caps. So. Let's try waiting for 24 hours and see what happens there. Here we go. Waiting for 24 hours. And there we are. The wait is over. Let's find out if we have any caps. Nothing. All right. Let's unassign a settler.
Now the reason that I'm using this mod to unassign a settler is because if you simply remove the resource, the settler doesn't actually get unassigned. The settler gets stuck in this limbo assignment of working. You see this, how it says working? Which means that they, they don't actually start spending any money at your settlements. All right, so according to this mod, we I have 36 settlers, one of whom is unassigned. Let's do the fast travel again. Off we go to Vault 111. Here we are, checking the time. It's the 3rd of August, 5.59 p.m., which means it's to be like 6 or 7 in the morning a.m. on the 4th when we get back to the Warwick Homestead. Let's go. Here we are. Moment of truth. Nothing. All right. Um, so I learned in the last video like this that I did that fast traveling and waiting oftentimes does not count. So, for example, the last video I did was about scrap and scavenging stations. And I found that by using a chair and waiting 24 hours, nothing appeared. And that by fast traveling, again, nothing appeared. And that the only way I got scrap to appear in my scavenging station is by actually playing the game for 24 in-game hours. And so that's what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go work on a, on a different settlement. Or maybe I'll work on this settlement. I don't know. I haven't decided. And, um... No, I'm going to leave this settlement the way it is, just for consistency. I'm not going to unassign any more settlers. I'm not building any more shops. I'm not doing anything to improve the happiness or, 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 or harm it. Let's take a look at my happiness. How's it doing? It's staying steady at 77. Oh, looks like I'm out of power. Well, we can worry about that later. Anyway, it's staying set, uh, steady at 77. And I am going to go do something else for 24 in-game hours. So just, let's take a look at the time. 7.58 a.m. on August 4th. So I'll come back to you after 8 a.m. on August 5th. Be back soon. All right, it's been more than 24 hours. I went to Finch Farm to work on my settlement there. And just as... It turned 8 o'clock or so. My entire settlement decided to go and attack Saugus Ironworks and this gunner fortification over there. So I've been having to deal with this. Anyway, it looks like the battle is over and it is now time. Let's see, it's 11.01 a.m. So that's a couple hours past the time we were looking for, which means that we can go check the Warwick, Warwick Homestead. By the time we get there, it'll be about five or six hours later than when we... Uh, that than it is now and I made sure that I didn't do any fast traveling between when I left Warwick until now so this should accurately represent 24 in-game hours where the game was actually played not where there was waiting or sleeping or fast traveling so cross your fingers 50 bottle caps look at that 50 bottle caps ladies and gentlemen uh, so what does this tells us? Well, uh, what does this tell us? <coughs> Excuse me. This tells us that at least 50 bottle caps are generated. Excuse me, are generated per 24 hour in game period. As long as those 24 hours are spent playing the actual game, not fast traveling or sleeping or waiting. Now, there are a couple of questions left. Do all of the settlers need to be assigned because remember we unassigned a settler before we waited 24 hours in game. So let's actually reassign that settler back to his or her task. I'm an idiot. Here I am trying to be clever. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let us reassign this clever person to, there we go. This resource is now assigned. All right, so there we go. Now, all of my settlers are now assigned. Let's check the software once again, just to be sure. Oh, come on. 
Did I just? Yeah, I did, didn't I? All right, settlement hollow tape. Manage settlers. Unmark assigned settlers. List all. Okay, zero unassigned. All right, so there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at the time. It is 7:41 p.m. on August the 5th. I'm going back to Finch Farms. I'm going to spend another 24 in-game hours, and then we'll come back to the Warwick Homestead, and we'll see if 50 caps have appeared in the uh, in the in the workshop, and that will tell us whether or not we have to have unassigned settlers for our settlement to generate money. All right, I'll be back soon. Actually, just had an idea. Uh, before I leave, I'm gonna take all the scrap in here because I think this is a perfect opportunity to test how much scrap you can generate in 24 hours with quite a lot of uh, scrapping stations. So, crap, I got a lot in here. Well, not that much. Okay. So I've got no scrap in my inventory. There's no scrap in there. And let's remind ourselves how many scrapping stations do we have? 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay. 19 scavenging stations active right now. There's nothing in the inventory. I did another video on this, but there were only five scavenging stations being used in that video. Let's see what kind of scrap can be generated by 19 scavenging stations over the same period of time. This will help us understand whether having more than one or more than five or ten is actually that beneficial. Okay, 24 hours. Let's remind ourselves what time it is. 7.59 p.m. local time. All right, so it's time. Here I am at Finch Farm. I just finished it. I just finished recording a video about it, but it's time to get back to work. All right, it's 8.37 p.m., so it's been 25 hours since we were last at the Warwick Homestead. <clears throat> Now for the moment of truth. Remember, this particular experiment is trying to see whether or not a settler has to be unassigned in order for the, the, the settlement to generate revenue. So will unassigned will, will assigned settlers shop at shops or will only unassigned settlers shop at shops? That's the question. All right, uh, all right, let's make sure here. Uh, yep, it's the next day. Do I have any scrap? Nope, I have no scrap. Let's check this. Hey, look at that! Look at that! It's there! That actually surprises me. I'm actually shocked! I thought your settlers had to be... I, I thought you had to have an unassigned settler in order for this to work. I am flabbergasted. And look at all look, uh, look at all this. So let's take all. Now let's uh, look in component view. You know it's not a lot. It's not a lot. So I've got, how many did I say er earlier in this video? I had 10 to 11 different scavenging stations set up here. And uh, if you compare it to the last video I did, on how scavenging stations work, it's it's exactly the same. It, it, it produced, it, it, the last time I did this, and there were only five scavenging stations, it produced two ballistic weave, and I suppose you could compare that to the two nuclear material that this particular try got, and only five fiber optics fertilizer, one fiber optic. It's not a lot. So wh what are we learning here? Are we learning that you only benefit from one scavenging station, it, that the number of settlers that you have set to scavenge does not matter. This calls for another experiment, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this calls for another experiment. All right, so we've actually learned something really important here. And, and just to double check, let's take a look at our terminal. Let's load our software. And let's, let's verify that we have absolutely no settlers unassigned. And we don't. There are 36 settlers in the settlement. Zero are unassigned. They're all working. Yes. 
They're all working, yeah. and yet yeah. I, this particular settlement still generated caps. That comes as a huge surprise to me. I thought it was the opposite. So we, we can we can pull a couple of things out of here. First of all, we learn that um, that despite despite what the game actually says, the number of settlers you have really does not matter. Like, I've had settlements that have only 15 settlers. And they still produce 50 caps a day. This settlement has 36 settlers, and it's only producing 50 caps a day. The second thing we're learning is that the number of shops you have, in terms of caps generation, doesn't matter. The only benefit to having more than one shop is either A you need the shop so that you can buy from it yourself or sell your purified water to it or, or otherwise sell stuff to it or B, you need to raise the happiness of your settlement. Those are really the only two reasons to have more than one shack because having more than one shack will not generate more revenue and having unassigned settlers does not generate more revenue. So, wow, that's great. I, I learned a lot here. Um, I'd appreciate your comments. You know, I, I hope that I hope that you learned something from this. I hope that that you walked away as surprised as I was. And uh, let me know if you think the experiment could have been done better. Thanks so much for watching.